Hi everyone! I get many questions in email and they become the inspiration for these videos. Some of the questions I get are quite frequent um, and today I got one of those frequent ones. So I, I figured, okay, I've got to make a video on this. It's pretty easy and it's one that, you know, like I said, I get a lot. So the, the example that I got today is very typical. Someone sent me their images and they said, look, I've got this thing moving in the image. What is it? It's not a satellite. It's not an airplane. What is it? So inevitably, it is an asteroid. Uh, sometimes people actually know it's an asteroid, but they don't want to assume it, so they want to ask, what is this thing? And then, of course, the next question is, if it is an asteroid, is it known? What's its name? Have I discovered an asteroid? People want to know. So in this video, I'm going to show you the answers to all of those questions, and I'm going to show you two different ways of going about doing it. In PixInsight, it's easy. PixInsight has recently now included the ability to annotate images, including moving objects like planets and asteroids. So I'm going to show you that, and we'll identify this particular person's asteroid using that method. And then I'll show you the other way, which is for those people that don't have PixInsight that are watching this, there are online tools that allow you to kind of figure it out as well. So let's get started and look at PixInsight here. With PixInsight, there is, well, before I show you the answer, let me just show you the person's data. You've got to see this. So I have already aligned his images, and the images that I received were raw images. And the data actually comes from a camera that is one of these one-shot color cameras. It's a cooled camera, uh, but uh, by aligning without actually debayering the image without calibrating and then debayering the image. It, it's weird to uh, to do this because if I now blink the images, watch watch what happens if I blink. It does this this weird effect uh, by not debay. This is what you never want to do. You want to debayer before you align images. You get this weird pattern thing going on. It looks like some kind of banded clouds. Of course, it's not. Ignore that. When you have your own data, and you have perhaps an asteroid or something running around in it, please, of course, calibrate your data, debayer the images first before you do the things that I'm about to show. Okay, now having said that, let's go find this person's asteroid. I believe it's down here in the lower left-hand quadrant. So let's zoom in and just go down here. I don't remember exactly where it is. So let's blink these frames and see if we can find a moving object here. Oh, I see something moving right there. It's very small. So let's move this down here and let's zoom in and move over here and uh, probably up a little. There it is. Do you see it on the right? And there may be more in this frame, but at least we know there is something right there. It's an asteroid. Now, did this particular person discover one we can now find out. So I'm going to show you from the beginning how to go about doing that. Um, let me just stop this at a minimum. In order to take advantage of PixInsight's method of doing this, we need to first plate solve an image, just one of the images, so that we know the positions of everything, including uh, the potential asteroid. So I'm going to go ahead and let's just exit out of here and open um, one of his images. Now I'm going to open one of these uh, aligned images, one of the images that I aligned. And I'm also going to do the following. I just want to show this to you, that this particular person was using an image capture uh, software that it put the information that we need in here for the script that I'm going to use to do its job. It has the time. It has the focal length of the telescope. It has the uh, coordinates that the telescope was pointed at. These things are going to make life very easy in a moment if you just had your, you don't know, your Canon or Nikon or something that you don't record all of this information, you got to do a couple of other steps. I'm not going to be showing that now. I'm going to assume that you have all the good stuff in the FITS header so that you can first plate solve the image using Image Solver. So Image Solver is under Image Analysis here. And it's getting this information from the FITS header. It's figuring it all out for us. So that is the easy thing to do. Um, having done that, I'm just going to say, please just go ahead and 
plate solve the image. It should figure it out. Now, I, what I didn't say is something that in my tutorials I've already explained to people. I have downloaded star catalogs. Again, these are formatted for PixInsight, so they're on my machine. I'm not going out to the internet to, uh, to use star catalogs to figure out the coordinates of the plate solution here. And so uh, it's going to find a solution very well. I have installed the Gaia catalog. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it, I explain all of this in my tutorials and fast track training, all of that kind of stuff. So I know it's going to succeed and it's taking a moment, but it is going to figure it out. Let's see. Did it figure it out? I think it did. That's it. It figured it out. In fact, if we now look at the FITS header, we should find extra stuff here. And this is the stuff that was just put in there to figure out the what's called the WCS, the World Coordinate System. So I should be able to actually, you know, figure out uh, coordinates of every single pixel here in this picture. But it's embedded in the information now. Having done that, we can do the second thing, which is the annotation. So this is step two. So annotation requires you have certain files, though. Let me go ahead and show you where to get those files. You just need to download them once, just like a star catalog. You need to download the asteroid files in order to make this script work. So I guess I can show you the script. Uh, so the script here is under render. This is the annotate image script. And it does have the option here for asteroids. So let me show you the website for PixInsight. You go, Hopefully you know how to do this. You go to the, you log in to your account and you go to the software distribution system where you can find here under asteroids the five files that you'll want to download. These contain uh, 250,000 asteroids, numbered asteroids that uh, you can search. And these are the brightest of those 250,000. So that should be a fair number of them. And as I understand, you can add more if necessary. So let me go back to PixInsight. And uh, the way this works is that I'm going to remove this here and show you how to do this from the beginning. It already has these catalogs here that are loaded, but you need to, in order to activate those files that you've downloaded, and I have them already downloaded on my machine, you need to create what is basically at the moment what is called a custom, what do they call this thing here? It's a custom catalog, basically. So you can add, you press the add button, and it gives you all the different layers, is what they're called here, all of the different layers, and we want the custom um, XEPH layer files here. That's what we want. So we add it. Now you'll find this funny thing. There are only three, we, we had five files, right? Well, there's only three spots. Well, we can just load another uh, instance of this and then we can load the other two. Just need to do this once, it'll remember it. So I need to go to my computer, my C drive, where I have saved. I have my catal star catalog files here, but I also downloaded those five that you saw. So I'm just going to load one into each of here, one into each of these slots, like that. And then uh, I think we should be able to add another one of these instances here, like that. And this is empty, so now we can just add the other two. Okay, so that's how you set it up. Now there are all these cool options. You can determine, you know, what gets drawn in the image and, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, I'm just going to go with the defaults. And uh, just to demonstrate that it should show us the, the name of the comet in this image. Let's see. It'll be good that I'm doing this first, because then when I show you the other method, we should, with great confidence, be able to say we're doing it correctly, because we'll kind of have the answer here. And lo and behold, check it out. If we zoom in to this new annotated version of the image, you'll see that it's labeled things. Now, I haven't shown you the screen stretched version, but somewhere in here is the is a nebula he was working on. It's the Thor's helmet. Uh, that was what he was working on. And apparently there's an asteroid here that wasn't the one that we were looking at though. The one we were looking at was this one over in the corner. This is Malabar. 
There's the answer. It's a magnitude, almost a 14th magnitude object. This thing, now we'd have to go back and blink the images to see if we can see it at all. Probably not. At nearly 19th magnitude, that might be beyond the faint limit, certainly in uncalibrated data, to be able to see it. So something cool is that you may discover that you can find other asteroids here um, by doing this annotation, and then you can go look for them in your data, because then you, you might not have seen them otherwise, but then you see this faint thing moving, and well, that's kind of cool. So there you have it. That's one way to identify an asteroid in your data. Now, another way to do this is to use an online uh, resource, and I will show you that here. The Minor Planet Center, Harvard Minor Planet Center, maintains everything you ever needed to know about asteroids and comets. It is the main warehouse for all of the catalogs, for all the information, for all the submissions that are, uh, that are generated go here. Uh, all the observations for the, the surveys that are looking for asteroids, such as Catalina Survey, which is where I am on Mount Lemmon. Uh, there are many others, Linear and PanStars and all of these other surveys that are searching for asteroids and comets. All that information goes here. It's all cataloged. And you can, of course, mine this information. The particular resource you need to get to is this one. It's called the Minor Planet Checker. And unlike that more automated way, here we need some valuable information. We need to know the time, we need to know the position, and we need to know roughly the kind of the search radius and all that kind of stuff. So we, you know, the correct kind of field of view. Um, it doesn't need to be the whole field of view of our chip. You just want to know within a particular radius of a little piece of sky, you know, what are all the objects that are within that little piece of sky. So that, that's the idea. Now, we have that information because the FITS header, again, tells us what we need to know. So the date here you'll notice is that it has the, you know, the year, the month, and then it has the day in decimals, which is a little bit funky. So we'll need to figure out what that is. Remember, here's this image. We can look at the FITS header, and we want to get always get the UT time if it has that T here, it does mean it's in UT. So this was on the 26th. Uh, UT is when this data was taken at 4.05. Well, every six hours would be 0.25, a quarter of a day, right? So I think it's safe to say we can call this 0.2, roughly. I mean, the asteroid is going to be close. Uh, this will not be the most exact way to go about doing things unless you get the time right and your position on the Earth exactly right. So for real precision, you need to get all these numbers right. We're not going to go for real precision right now. So 1226, uh, 405. So let's go back to the page here. Now, by the way, I haven't done this. I am now doing this live. I have so much confidence. I'm doing this live. <laughs> I hope it works. And then we need the RA in deck. So we go back here and we do RA... Uh, 109, does this not give us the R? It may actually give us the RA in deck down below uh, because we did the plate solution. So let me just look here really quickly because I don't remember. And if you see it on the screen, I apologize. Hey, look at that. There it is. So 71828. That's, let's just go with what uh, the website wants. 71828. And then we need the other number. Uh, here. The other number is um, minus 13, 14, 11. So now we come to here. Minus 13. There we go. The search radius. Um, this accuracy that I'm putting in in terms of the time and, and whatnot depends on how fast the asteroid's moving. There's another thing that affects the accuracy. If you know an observatory that's near you, and many have these observatory codes. I, when I worked, uh, you know, in my work, I made sure that all the observatories had a code here for the Minor Planet Center. If you don't have one for your observatory, it's a cool project to do. Uh, I would highly recommend it. But uh, the 500 here, the default, means it's the center of the Earth. So that might not get you the ultimate precision. It might be off by a handful of arc seconds or more or less, depends on the parallax, depends on how far away the asteroid is. But center of the Earth is fine. 
you're probably not going to detect 24th magnitude things, uh, but we can look at things, let's say in this data, down to 20th magnitude. And let's do a search radius of, uh, you know, the five arc minutes is probably good enough, uh, just so we don't get too many other objects. Let's just see if that works. I filled in the form incorrectly. Please ensure I've read all the notes. <laughs> I hate when I fill in the form incorrectly. Let's see, what did I do? I put that... I put this, 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 increasing. Uh, let's see. All right, I'm back. Here was the problem. Uh, you need two. You need two digits here on the UT time, or it doesn't work. And then I found another problem. The field of view that this gentleman gave me is actually quite large, so I can't use the center of the frame. I actually have to say give me what objects are around where that asteroid is. So I need to know the rough coordinates of where in the image it is, but we plate solved it. So we can actually get those coordinates. So instead of using these coordinates, I can still use five, I think, but I need to get closer to where that asteroid is. So let's go back to PixInsight. You'll notice that once we've plate solved with the image solver, when you have your readout preview, it actually brings up the, uh, as you move around here, it brings up the RA and deck. So you'll notice over here, it's, a, it's actually a different number. Uh, we're somewhere around here, I guess. So it says 7, 14, 14, minus 12, 52, 59. So let's get those numbers. 7, 14, 14. I'm gonna, yeah, see that's 7, 14, 14, minus 12. 5259. Now let's press the button. Okay, I'm going to make sure that I find this thing. I'm going to put 15 arc minutes and produce list. This time it says processing. It doesn't throw an error. So again, you have to have at least two digits there. I had to put the zero or else it got all mad at me. Uh, so here we are, we get the page back, it gives us the answer. There are some asteroids running around in the field, but the one, of course, that we, we already knew the answer in PixInsight, it's the top of the list here because it's the closest to that position, is Malabar. So there you go. Uh, you now know how to use here the checker. Um, you'll want to be generous if you have a large field of view to be sure you can capture all the asteroids that uh, your interest in trying to figure out. Now, when you do get a result, if you have a very, if you're looking at a large piece of sky, you'll get many results. So you want to first look at uh, the magnitude, for example. If you see something that's like, you know, magnitude 20, it's very likely you're not detecting that thing, right? The 13th or 14th magnitude one, that one seems much more obvious. You can also look at the rate of motion and the direction of motion to identify whether it's a particular asteroid or not. Again, this is all easier in PixInsight, but here you can certainly do this with this uh, nice online uh, resource. So I hope you enjoyed uh, that very quick way to answer the question whether you've discovered an asteroid or not. And uh, I hope you join me again on the channel if you liked videos like this that answer these kind of simple but fun questions. Comment down below, subscribe to the channel, so please subscribe. Thanks.